the destruction of the Aztec culture was not the end of Cabrillo's exploits. He served as a soldier and sailor on several more expeditions, extending Spanish control over what is now Honduras and Guatemala. In 1530, Cabrillo got the wealth he had risked his life and health for. He was given an encomienda in the town of Coban in, in what is now Guatemala. Encomienda is the right to the labor of a certain number of individuals. If the right to the labor of some individuals sounds like slavery, it is. This practice had begun in Spain, where it was a reward for those fighting to expel the Muslims. Now it was used to reward those who had fought for Spanish control of the Americas. Cabrillo's reward also included an amount of land, which fortunately for him had gold that could be extracted through panning. Unfortunately for the local Indians, Cabrillo used them as slave labor to extract that gold. In 1532, Cabrillo left for Spain and returned with a woman named Beatriz as his wife. What would Beatriz see in Cabrillo? The rugged soldier who is probably still under 40, if not under 30 years of age. We have no portrait of Cabrillo. But there is an interesting quote from a young Spanish woman who was sent to the New World to seek a husband among the conquistadors, who found either riches or death in the Americas. They look like they have escaped from hell, they are so maimed. Some have lost a foot, others a hand, others have no ears, others have lost an eye, others have lost half their face. We might imagine Cabrillo would spend the rest of his life on his Guatemalan estate, raising a family and working indigenous people to death. But we know his greatest adventure was yet to come. After hacking their way through the Caribbean and Central America, the Spanish had not found what they were looking for. They were still seeking a trade route to Asia. In the 1530s, after nearly four decades in the Americas, they were convinced they were close to China. Part of this was surely wishful thinking, since the ancient Greeks had calculated the circumference of the Earth thousands of years before. If they had noted the distance from Spain to Mexico, they might have realized they had a long way to go. However, some explorers had reached Asia by sailing around the Horn of Africa in the 1490s. Climates tend to stay the same while traveling along east-west longitude, so both the Caribbean and Southeast Asia tend to have a tropical climate. This similar climate might have encouraged hopeful treasure seekers they were not too far from their goal, the markets of Asia. So two expeditions were proposed. One would travel due west, while Cabrillo would command a second expedition sailing north along the coast, in the hopes that one of them, or both of them, would find routes to China. To accomplish this, new ships had to be built and transported to the Pacific coast. What was this process like? Some of the ships were built by Pedro de Alvarado, governor of the new province of Guatemala. Again, our old friend Bartolomeo de las Casas has left a vivid description of the process. He killed an infinite number of people in building the ships, from the north to the South Sea, 130 leagues. The Indians carried anchors of three or four quintales, which I believe would be several hundred pounds, which cut furrows into the shoulders and loins of some of them. He broke up homes, taking the women and girls and giving them to the soldiers and sailors in order to keep them satisfied and letting them into his fleet. Cabrillo built three ships, although some records suggest four. We know of three. The San Salvador, a 200-ton galleon and Cabrillo's flagship. La Victoria, a 100-ton galleon. And the San Miguel, a smaller ship equipped with oars and sails. The expedition set sail June 27, 1542. They became the first Spaniards to reach San Diego, which Cabrillo named San Miguel. In early October, they reached Catalina Island, San Pedro Bay, and the coast of Santa Monica. 
They called San Pedro Bay the Bay of Smoke, probably because the natives used control to burn to manage the land. They also noted an armada of canoes paddling out to greet them. This was a native tribe known as the Tongva, which the Spanish would eventually call the Gabrielino. Viewers are encouraged to watch my previous videos on the Gabrielino. The expedition rested and refit for some time and noted the great friendliness of the natives. Eventually, the expedition continued north. They completely missed San Francisco Bay, which European explorers would continue to miss for several more centuries. They possibly got as far as the Russian River before winter storms forced them to turn back. On November 23rd, the expedition returned to the area of Catalina Island. At this point, the story takes a turn for which we do not have a full explanation. When the Spanish re-entered Gabrielino territory, the Gabrielino paddled out to attack them. We do not know what caused the previously friendly natives to become hostile, but Given Cabrillo's record with native people, it's not hard to imagine he and his men were less than respectful. According to surviving records, some of the Spanish were trying some fishing to stock up on supplies. A large force of angry Gabrielino were spotted on an intercept course. Hearing shouts of warning, Cabrillo leapt into what he thought was shallow water to help cover the retreat of his sailors. However, his leg was badly cut in some coral. The ships were able to get underway and headed to San Miguel Island. On the voyage, it was clear Cabrillo's leg wound was infected. He died January 3rd, 1543, and was buried on the island of San Miguel. His grave has never been identified. So that is how the Spanish first came to Los Angeles. There was another expedition in 1602, which did not go any better. Fortunately for the Gabrielino, the Spanish did not show much interest in the area until the 18th century. When they returned in force, yet another European would try to remake California. But the treasure thought by Father Junipero Serra was very different from Cabrillo or Cortez. He did not look for gold, but for souls to convert. Thank mm -hmm. you.